don't need that. And alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati amalina may yahdihillahu falamudillalahu wa may yudlil falahadiyalahu wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahtuhu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi tasliman kathira amma ba'du fa inna khayla al-kalam kalamullahi wa khayla al-huda huda rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharu al-umur muhtathatuha wa kulla muhtathatin bid'atun wa kulla bid'atin dolalatun wa kulla dolalatin fin nari As it has been mentioned and announced, and we want to reiterate it, the administration here in this masjid have decided to take advantage, inshallah, of the days that we have off from work and the days we have off from school to put a program on the next three days, be idnilad to address some of the critical contemporary issues that are facing our community. Many times, Muslims, we will identify a problem, but we never come up with the solution. For an example, Easter, Halloween, Christmas, I'm here to say right now, without biting my tongue, without talking out of the side of my neck, it is haram for the Muslim to have any manifestation in the form of a celebration that has to deal with Christmas. We can't eat the food of Christmas. We can't give cars Christmas. We can't take Christmas gifts. Any and everything connected to Christmas, the Muslim has to say as it relates to that issue, lakum dinukum waliyadin. The only thing that we can do about Christmas is to give dawah to our relatives, to give dawah to the non-Muslims. Let me repeat that again. Because one of the contemporary issues is what do we do when our children go to public schools, state schools? What do we do? The reality of the situation is it's not always easy. It's not always easy living in these societies. But what am I to do? I don't believe in Christmas, and my kids don't believe in Christmas. But there's going to be a picture, or there's going to be a play in school of the nativity, and they want my child to play one of the three wise men. Or they want my other child to be an angel. Or they want the other child to be Maryam or Isa. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhima. Point is, that's not the khutbah. Point is, instead of us just saying, this is haram, and that's haram, and we shouldn't do this, and we shouldn't do that, the question the challenge, the question, the challenge is, what's the badil? What's the replacement? So instead of just saying, Christmas is haram, you can't do anything. And I repeat that. I hope this question comes up during these three days after the khutbah, inshallah. What's the delil that we can't do anything connected to Christmas? Nothing. Zero. If I had a pen and a piece of paper, and I put a dot on that paper. You can't do that much. But the point here is, what's the badil? Don't tell me everything is haram, but you don't come with a solution. Islam is a religion that identifies the problem and it comes with the solution. So now the solution is, part of it, the badil is, instead of doing anything with Christmas, we're going to come to the community on these days and we're going to make a ta'awun, insha'Allah, on al-birr wa taqwa We're going to cooperate. And we're going to put our fingers on the pulse of some of these issues that need to be addressed. So I appreciate, I acknowledge and recognize the hikmah of the choice of the administration here. This from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is with the ittifaq and the ijma of the scholars of Islam, ya ummat al-Islam. When the Prophet ﷺ left Mecca and he came to al Medina, all of the scholars are in agreement that the very first thing that he took care of 
before addressing nikah, talaq, al khula, before addressing jihad, before addressing all of these issues, even before making alliances, the very first thing he paid attention to was building the masjid. Building the masjid. There's no ikhtilaf in that. And why did he build the masjid? For many reasons. One of the reasons is that in Medina, when the community is in Medina, he has to address the issues, the challenges. And in Medina, he had challenges. He had to address them in an organized way. It wasn't a way that everybody was doing his own thing, everybody was all over the place. So with that being the case, with that being the case, I want to draw your attention to the hikmah of what the masjid, what the idara here has chosen, and also your responsibility in terms of the call to come in to participate, not only in this program, but to get you to understand that as we are Muslims here in this country, if we don't know the role of the masjid, if the masjid is just to you a place where I come on Friday, then you're missing the point. These challenges that are in front of us, I would describe it as we say in America, we have some big fish to fry. And then there are some little fish. The Muslims many times, we are juvenile, we're immature, so we busy ourselves with the little fish at the expense of the big, big fish. Issues like Islamophobia, issues like the media, issues like our marriages, issues like protecting the Islamic identity of our kids. The Islamic identity. Right now there's a child in this masjid, he's the youngest boy or girl here. Newly born, three weeks, four weeks, one month. Inshallah, after 10 years, 15 years from today, what is going to be the Islam of that kid? What is it going to be? Because there are people who are actively engaged in trying to change normal Islam. Even from our own community, there are those Muslims who are liberal. There are those Muslims from amongst us. They are brothers, they are our sisters. There are those Muslims from amongst us who are Almanis, the people who are secularists, people who actually believe, people who actually believe the ayah that I said earlier, Lekum Dina Kum Din. The modern person says this ayah goes to show that Allah allowed you to be a Kafir if you want to be a Kafir. You can leave your religion if you want to be a, a non Muslim. So the point here, the point here is the masjid in al-Islam and the role of the masjid is critical when it comes to addressing these issues. And until we all get on the same page and we get on this point, we're going to continue to have some of the problems that we're having and Allah knows best. In the book of Allah, Ikhwani, bring this to your attention. The issue of the masjid and the role of the masjid, it is vast. The Quran as it relates to the masjid and the role of the masjid, it talks about many different things, many subjects, many ways. When the masjid is mentioned in the Quran, many topics are discussed, many, many topics. The sunnah is the same way. From that is what the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna ahab al-biladi ilallah masajiduha wa abghaduha aswaquha. The places that Allah loves the most in the world are the masjids. The places that he hates the most are the marketplace. He doesn't like the marketplace because in the marketplace people are lying, stealing, cheating, screaming. They're acting in the way that's a problem. Whereas he loves the masjid because look at yourselves right now. The masjid is the place where when the person comes here, no matter what his problems are outside this masjid, he's going to sit and he's going to listen. And he's going to be tuned in. He's going to be tuned in to what's being said on a day like this. This is his religion. He's been, he's been created to worship Allah. So when he comes to this place, he's reminded of that. Automatic. All you have to do is just look out. Everybody is sitting. You can practically hear a pin drop. Why? It's part of our deen. On Friday, come, be quiet and don't talk. So the masjid helps people to remember Allah. Whereas when you leave the masjid, when you leave the masjid, Everything out there is designed to make you forget Allah. So as a result of that, one of the narratives, one of the subjects, one of the messages of the Quran and the Sunnah is how Allah loves the masjid. I've been to some places where the masjid is built out of marble and this and that, but there's no ruh or right spirit in that masjid. And I've been to masjids where they're very small, smaller than that room right there, small, like that room. 
But in that masjid, they are teaching the people, calling to the Quran, calling to the Sunnah. The people are brothers and sisters, and they're switched on, and they're moving forward. So Allah Azza wa he loves that. That's part of the narrative. Another narrative from the many, many, many subjects that have been mentioned in the Quran about the masjid is what we see going on today in Aleppo. Someone I heard from in there, some voices went up. The brother had to mention, we don't talk about politics. I understood exactly what he was talking about. We don't talk about politics in the real masjid in any way that Ahmad Bakr and Zay wants to talk about politics. We talk about everything in our religion, but there are hudud, there's adab, there are ahkam. The masjid is not the marketplace where anybody can just stand up and jump up, say what he want to say, do what he want to do. And this is something that our ummah has lost. What are the etiquettes of the masjid? Is it okay for you just to scream out, do whatever you want to do at any given time? So look what happened in Aleppo as it relates to the Quran. A narrative, a subject. Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسِ بَعْضُهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لَحُدِّمَتْ سَوَامِعُ وَبِيعٌ وَصَلَوَاتٌ وَمَسَاجِدُ يُذْكَرَ فِيَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا If it wasn't for one group of people, if it wasn't for the fact that Allah created one group of people to stop and to push back and to repel another group of people, if that didn't happen, then verily the masajid will be destroyed, synagogues will be destroyed, churches will be destroyed. So Allah Ta'ala created this ummah so that when there's dhulm and people are oppressing other people, he created this ummah to stop other people from doing that dhulm. Because if there's not a group of people that does that, then the masajid are going to be destroyed. Like in Aleppo. This issue is mentioned in the Quran. So people like Putin, people like Bashar, Basharullahu Ta'ala, Bima Yastihiq Yawmul Qiyamah. These people like this, these people like this, their way is to destroy the masjid, to destroy the masajid, so that Allah's name is not mentioned. The point here is, the point here is, that narrative has been mentioned. How did Quraysh deal with the Masjid al-Haram? How did the Mushrikun deal with it? They stopped people from coming to the Masjid to hear about those things. Why were they created? So the Masjid has a lot of narratives that have been mentioned in the Quran. Now is not the time to go through all that. One of the narratives connected to us on an everyday basis. Allah mentioned in the Quran about the Masjid. ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ حُرُمَاتِ اللَّهِ that is, anyone, anyone, anyone who exalts what is haram, those things that are sacred, like the masjid, like the masjid, فَهُوَ خَيْرُ لَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ That is better for him with his Lord. So anyone who sees the masjid as being haram and has a hurma, he can't scream out in the masjid. Can't scream out. Just say what you want to say because you want to say it and you have a position and opinion. Is there anyone here who... His father was difficult. His mother was difficult as we were growing up. Right now, they're difficult. Can I just come and slap my father in the face because he says that that's something I don't like? No, because there's a love of hurma. There's a love of taqdeer, ihtiram. I have to be respectful and I have to bite my tongue. I have to eat humble pie. I have to bite the bullet. The masjid is like that. For the one who has iman, he makes ta'zim. Our community, our community, because we don't always know, we just do anything. That's from the narrative of the Masajid. So I want to share a few issues with you guys here, you brothers here, you sisters here. A dhikr that I hope and I pray to Allah will benefit you as it relates to tackling the serious challenges that we have. What is the role of the Masjid? Do we just get up and we say, hey, we got a lot of challenges. Let's just get with the program. All right, where is the badil? Where is the solution? What do we do? What can we do? Is it just kalam farih? If we don't know how to deal with the masjid, when and how are we going to deal with big issues? There are simple things right in front of my nose. I want to leave that alone and tackle the big issues. No, our prophet taught us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah taught us, and then his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa take care of the small things. Allah will take care of the big things for you. First issue I want to mention, ikhwani, about the masjid is a simple question. Who does the masjid belong to? 
Does the masjid belong to the imam? Does the masjid belong to the idara from the shura? Does the masjid belong to the people who first built it? Does the masjid belong to a particular tribe? Does the masjid belong to the Arabs who were the first Muslims? Does the masjid belong to the people who have the most money? I think everybody knows the answer that the masjid belongs to Allah. The masjid belong to Allah. He told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man tatahara fi baytihi thumma masha ila baytin min buyutillahi kanat lahu khutwatan kanat lahu bi kulli khutwatan ila akhiri. Anyone who makes wudu in his house and he comes to one of the houses of Allah, the masjid belongs to Allah. Now I'm coming to a really important point here. The Prophet prohibited us, prohibited us, people in the masjid. He prohibited you from coming to the masjid and telling a man who's sitting there, get up and let me sit there. Because he doesn't own that place. He prohibited us from choosing one place in the masjid that you always pray in there. Like the Itan of the Ibn. The Arabs knew during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the nature of the camel, the Ba'ir. The camel is an animal. If he lived here in Toronto, you let him go from this masjid, his corral, he'll go all the way over to the east, he'll go all the way to the west, he'll go over here, visit his cousin, his uncle, he'll drink from over there, he'll graze from there. At the end of the day, he's going to come right back here and he's going to always sit where he sits all the time. He prohibited you from choosing a place in the masjid like that. Because it's not your place. And plus, Yom Qiyamah, the earth is going to come and bear witness for you. That you pray here, you pray there, you pray here, you pray there. So the point is, the Mu'adhin, he can't put some rag there, his hat there, and he says, this is my spot. The Sheikh can't say, that's my spot. Everybody knows Sheikh Ahmed, he always prays over there in the chair, in the same spot. No. Anybody who gets there, that's his spot. Because the masjid belongs to Allah. If the masjid belongs to Allah, the Muslim he has to understand that with the masjid he has to do Allah's work. My body belongs to Allah, your body belongs to Allah, so I can't do anything. I can't just punch you and kill you and shoot you and stab you and steal your money. I can't do anything to myself, put tattoos on, do this, do that. I can't do that. My wife, my wife, she can't come and pluck her eyebrows, pluck her eyebrows. The man, the Muslim man, he wants to avoid what's in front of his nose, what's above his nose, above his nose. The eyebrows of your wife is a major sin. And the Prophet asked Allah to curse the lady that did it and the one is being done to. The one who did it and the one's being done. And he wants to put that aside and talk about big, big issues that are very, very far away. Those big issues are important. Take care of what is in front of your nose and above your nose. And Allah is going to take care of the rest. So the point is, the masjid belongs to Allah. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُنُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ those people believe in Allah on the last day, they are the custodians of the masjid. So the imam, so the idara, so the shura, so everybody here, we all have a responsibility to do the work of the masjid. And what's the work of the masjid? Learning the adab of the masjid. Learning the ahkam of the masjid. Learning how to come and how to leave. What to do, what not to do. These are part of the challenges. How are we going to look outside of the masjid when the reality in the masjid, the house of Allah, the Muslims are jammed up. In Babel Ola, with Qiyas, if the masjid is messed up in our behavior, then it's going to be a problem dealing with the other stuff. It's going to be a problem. And this is the way Shaitani has tricked us and fooled us. Second thing, Ikhwani, I want to mention about the masjid as it relates to these challenges. The masjid first. That's what the Prophet did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he came to Medina, he focused on the masjid. Is there anyone here who doesn't know that? And that's why those scholars used to say, and we continue to say, the statement of the, the scholars, all of the good, al-khayr, kullu khayr, al-khayr, fi ittiba' min salaf. All of the good is in following the salaf, and the prophet is at the top of the list, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions. And all of the evil is in following the people of the khalaf, the people today, the different Muslims who have different understandings. You have the political Muslim, but which politics? It's the politics of Trump. The politics of Trump 
as he's running for the president, he talks bad about his opponent. If I become the president, I'm going to put her in jail. She's a thief. She's a criminal. She's this. She's that. But then when he wins, he says she's a very nice lady. She's a good, not those politics, lying, the politics, lying, cheating, Democrat, Republican. No, that's not the siyas of al-Islam. That's not the siyas of al-Islam. We have an understanding of siyasa with us that's different from the other people. So my point here, my point here is when he came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't start with jihad, didn't start with talaq, didn't start with nikah, didn't start with any of these issues. He started with, I have to address the issues of my community from the masjid. It is this place that I'm going to be able to deal with my community. Second thing, Ikhwani, one of the most important issues of the masjid is the importance of the masjid being a place where we get solace, where we get comfort, where we get what is known in Arabic as sakina, not like the aswaq. This is the place where the Muslim comes, like Ali ibn Abi Talib, when he had a misunderstanding with his wife, Fatima Zahra, radiallahu anha, Fatima, had a misunderstanding. He didn't beat her down, didn't punch her out, didn't knock her out, didn't put her in a body bag, didn't do any of that. He left her house and went to the masjid. Prophet Muhammad came and found him in the masjid, sleeping on the dirt, on the dirt. No carpet, no fans, no painted wall, the dirt. But he dealt with all of the issues of the community and conquered his continent. And his masjid was made out of dirt. He saw the man laying there and he bent down and he shook him and he said, oh, Abu Turab, Abu Turab, what's, what's going on? Abu Turab, he came to the masjid to relax, to leave his wife, to calm down. The masjid is a place of sakina. Before the salat, during the salat, after the salat, like right now. Are you people not paying attention right now? This masjid is filled up right now. Every room is filled up right now. If you look around, everyone is quiet. Everyone has edip, everyone here. That's how the masjid is supposed to be. The masjid is not a place like where you have cows and camels and dogs and crazy people saying and doing what they want. Before Salat, doing Salat and after Salat. He was praying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While praying, he heard the noise of people who were not praying. They made a lot of noise. After Salat, because he was not given the ilm al ghayb he said to those people, my shatnukum, what happened? They say, Ya Rasulullah, we ran, we ran to the masjid, we ran to the salah because we didn't want anything, we didn't want to miss it. So I was making wudu, I was pulling up, so I ran into the masjid. I don't want to miss the salah, I didn't want to miss the rakah. He told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taf'alu. Ida ataytum min as-salat fa'alaykum bis sakinati wal waqar. Ma adraktu fa sallu wa ma fa'atakum fa'atimu. Pay attention to this adab. Because it's not a day except people go against this because we don't know. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why are you people, what's that noise? We were running. He said, don't run to the Salat. When you come to the Salat, when you come to the Masjid, have Sakina and Waqar. Come gentle, walk normally. Don't run. Come gentle, walk normal, Sakina, easy. Whatever you catch with the Imam, pray it. Whatever you miss, get up and make it up. Sakina, that's before the Salat. He was praying, people were outside of the Salat. He said to do that. Inside of the Salat, he was praying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he went down in Sajda, he heard the people make a lot of noise. Everybody in the masjid, they went down on their knees. After the prayer, he faced the people, which was a sunnah. Sometimes he would face the people like this to the right after Salat. Sometimes he would sit and face the people to the left in the Saf al awwal because these people generally, they made more efforts to get here. They got here before everybody else. So as a result of that, they get some special rewards, especially the people on the right. May Allah Ta'ala put the people in Saf al awwal in the Jannah al Firdaus. And may he allow all of us to go to the Jannah al Firdaus. But the Saf al awwal is not like the guy who's coming right now. The Saf al awwal is not like the guy who's over there. Anyway, anyway, after the salat, he told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا سَجَدَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلَا يَبْرُقْ كَمَا يَبْرُقُ الْبَعِيرِ If any of you goes into sajda, don't go down the way the camel goes down. 
So everybody went down on their knees. So they heard the noise, boo, 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 boo. The Prophet ﷺ said, don't do that. They didn't mean any evil. They didn't mean any harm. But the hurma of the masjid suggests, dictates, necessitates that no one should compromise the sakin of the masjid with any kalam that's not munasib. Also after salat. Now you got to really pay attention to this. After the prayer. He told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam, Inna al-malaikata tusalli ala ahadikum ma dama fi musallahu alladhi salla fihi ma lam yasubhu hadathun As long as one of you prays, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and you're in the masjid, and you stay in your place, as long as you stay in your place, and you don't lose your wudu, the malaika, they are making dua to Allah for you. Sakina after the salah. So this man, he wants to stay in his place, and that man wants to stay in his place, and that man. But the vast majority of us, we want to get up and we want to leave. That's okay. No problem. But watch what happens today after salat al Juma. Watch what happens, inshallah, after salat al Asr. Watch what happens after every prayer in every masjid. After every prayer and every masjid, the people who are wanting to leave, they start competing with those people who are sitting down in the malaik are making dua for them. Watch what happens in every masjid. And what are they competing them with? Competing with kalam farid, kalam that has no benefit. What did the Toronto Raptors do? What did he over there, what did he do? The malaik are making dua for this person and his mobile phone is going off. That one over there, his mobile phone is playing Arab music. This one, African music. That one is hip-hop music. That one is something else. The ringtones. Listen to the craziness in the masjid. The ringtones. Allah described the salat of the mushrikeen. We have some imams, the mutashaddideen. They'll say that a tashabbuh with the kuffar is when you wear a suit and tie. You can't wear a suit and tie because that's a tashabbuh with the kuffar. Men That's a hadith. Anyone who was like a group of people, they're from them. So the shadid imam comes and says, Hey, you can't wear shirt and tie. Hey, you can't wear jeans. Hey, that's shadid. That is not resembling the kuffar. Resembling the kuffar is when you do something that the kuffar are known by. Like wearing the dot on your head the way the Sikh and Hindu, the Hindus do. Like wearing the, 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 the thing of the father, the, the, the priest in the church. When people see that, they say, that's a priest. That is specific to him. But this thing with our telephones, it is something that is from the kuffar. As it relates to salah, because Allah mentioned it in the Quran. And he made tahdeed. Some of us have that ringtone when it goes off. It goes like <laughs> something like this, whistling. His ringtone is the whistle of the bird. Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ صَلَاتُهُمْ عِنْدَ الْبَيْتِ إِلَّا مُكَانْ وَتَصْدِيَةً Their salat at the house, the kuffar, their salat at the Kaaba, in the masjid, their dhikr, their salat, it was nothing but clapping and whistling. That's what the kuffar do in the masjid when it comes to ibadah. So we find in our masjid that the masjid in al Islam is something that tells us if we don't take care of what's between these four walls how in the world are we going to take care of what's out of these walls if I can't respect my mother and my father how in the world I'm going to respect somebody else it just doesn't make sense so it's from the hikmah of Allah that what happened before the salat and I'm not I'm not attacking anyone this is not hajum on anyone it was an ibrah for all of us the masjid is a special sacred place it is not just a place we come and bump our heads and that's it. It is a place that has been mentioned in the Quran in many ways. Mentioned in the Sunnah in many ways. And all I can do here today, inshallah, is scratch the surface. The masjid, the masjid. Everybody here, he knows of the hadith of the Bedouin who came and urinated in the masjid. When the Prophet wasallam told that Bedouin, he said, Come here, Bedouin, come here, come here. In the hadith masajid lam tubna. The masjid has not been built for the pollution of mankind. That's not what it's for. The masjid wasn't built for the pollution of mankind. Talking about the raptors. The masjid is not for that. The masjid is not built for me and you to be arguing and talking nonsense. For me to spit in the masjid. 
he was about to pray someone spit towards the Qibla and they just didn't regular spit it was the spit, zukam that stuff, spit Prophet Muhammad got ready to pray, he saw it he went and he wiped it with his own clothes with his own clothes and everybody knows that that's something I'm not going to touch anybody green spit with my clothes but that was the Prophet's way of telling the people وسلم, take care of the Qibla it's part of your identity. Take clear the nadaf of the masjid. It's part of Al-Islam. This issue of the Bedouin. The masjid was not built for our nonsense. And I'm going to come to something that is really a tragic, a tragedy, inshallah. Third and the last point that I want to mention here today, Akhwani, is as it relates to the masjid. Everybody here knows that the Prophet ﷺ was a gentleman. He was the consonant gentleman. You know, gentleman with adab. The one who opens the door, lets you go in. He has adab. They call him a gentleman. He has adab. But he was also a gentle man. He was gentle, easy. Everybody knows that about him. Allah described him in the Quran with that over and over again. Bil mu'minin, ra'ufun rahim. When it relates to the believers, he's ra'uf, he's rahim. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Bima you were easy with them, Ya Muhammad. A rahmat from Allah. Many ayat and ahadith. Listen to this. He was gentle in the way his religion is, the tashri'ah of Al Islam. Things are with a tadarruj. Things are with a tadarruj. Just not everything haram, just like that, according to what the people can do. That's Rahma, that religion that he brought. His religion wants ease for everybody. He doesn't want difficulty. Our religion is easy. Our Nabi who brought it was a Rahma to us. But although he was a Rahma, listen to what he said. Part of his Rahma is he said, لا تدعو على أنفسكم don't make dua against yourselves and don't make dua against your children. It may be that the mother gets upset with her child, the father gets upset with his child. He says about his child, may Allah curse you for what you do. May Allah punish you for what you're doing. He may make a dua, a general dua, talking about Syria, talking about Bashar. Basharahu Allahu ta'ala yawmul qiyamah bima yastahiq wa yushhidna alayhi. The mother person makes a dua against Bashar. Oh Allah! Curse the Velema. Hey, hey, Achi. That dua is general. Don't you know a lot of us are from the Valimin? Don't you know that a lot of us are from the Valimin? I know what you mean and who you mean, but don't make it general like that. The Nabi said, don't make dua against yourselves, nor your children. So we don't make dua against ourselves. He may make dua on Juma, and then as a result of that, that goes along with the hour his dua is accepted. And yet, he made dua because people compromise the masjid. There's a person from amongst us, he loses his key. He lives on the other side of Toronto. He gets up and he says, my key, my key, I lost my key. Anybody see my key? Prophet Muhammad taught us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to say to that brother, la raddaha Allahu ilayk. May Allah don't give you your key back. He has to leave this masjid to go all the way to the other side of Toronto in this weather without his keys. And he has no one, he's a single brother. He has no one with another key. But the Prophet made dua against him and told us collectively, make dua against him. Why? Why? Because he compromised the hurma of the masjid. It's not a joke, it's serious. He told us, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, that when the person sells in the masjid, and I experienced this just recently, a sheikh came during the days when Halab was in a lot of trouble. Everybody was excited. So they were asking for money. Who's going to donate? Who's going to donate? The sheikh took off his watch and he donated it to the brother. He said, who will buy the sheikh's watch? Who will buy the sheikh's watch? In the masjid, who will buy it? A brother said, I'll buy it for a thousand pounds because he likes the sheikh. Thousand pounds. One of the regular brothers said, sheikh, sheikh, what about the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If you see a man selling in the masjid, then you should make dua against him and say, La arbah Allah tijaratik. May Allah not cause your commerce to profit. The sheikh had forgot. He got caught up like everybody else. 
Sheikh said, give me my watch back. Give me my watch. Took the watch. He said, I'm giving you your, my watch, and I'm going to donate a thousand pounds, a kafara for what I did. So we made dua against that individual. Why? The masjid is not that. It's not for the marketplace. The masjid ikhwani in our religion, it plays a role, Ahlul Islam. The masjid is not the place where the Muslim only sees it and smells it. This is it only on Friday. If we don't go back to what the Prophet left us in this regard, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think we're fooling ourselves. Something is right in front of my nose and I want to deal with something that's really big. It's important, but right now I have the ability. As a regular Muslim, I have the ability to participate more in the masjid, to give money for the masjid, to come to the masjid, to be a help of the masjid, so forth and so on. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam has left us a religion that is practical. Our religion is practical. It is not the religion of Fawda like these Christians and like these uh, the Yahud. It's not a religion like that. It's a religion that makes sense. It's just our job to come to learn our religion. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. I know that I went over by 10 minutes, but that is because I know it's the weekend and stuff like that, but I know that some people, you have to go back to work, so I just want to apologize. I hope that Allah Ta'ala put your sabr, inshallah, in your muwazin of hasanat, your muqiyama, so I'm mu'tadhar for what had happened. Let us just be balanced people, and let us go back to the simple sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah Ta'ala to plant our feet firmly upon the kitab and the sunnah and to make us of those people truthful in word and deed and to bring this ummah back to his majd and back to his rush that we used to be upon and to make us of those people who are the uqala in this religion who know how to move the religion forward. Ikhwani, donate and give generously to the masjid inshallah Ta'ala for those of you who can come. We encourage you to bring your children, to bring your families to the masjid to the best of your ability for these last days. Aqimu salat, yarhamakumullah.